team, it's your boy D Neil back with another reaction video, guys. Here we are with the Max Verstappen dilemma. Before we dive in, make sure y'all subscribe, ring notification bell, give the video a thumbs up. Also, I'm starving, so I'm gonna be snacking on a lunchable during the video. Please don't hate me for that. <laughs> Let's dive in. Sleep, win, repeat. Max Verstappen has taken the checkered flag to win the Japanese Grand Prix. Max Verstappen is champion of the world. It's Max Verstappen who breaks Aston Martin hearts and takes pole position. Max Verstappen who crosses the line to win the Dutch Grand Prix. Turn up to the max. I'm not sure why we do this. To I swear to God. <laughs> I love watching Max's greatness, but <laughs> when it gets so dominant, bro, I'd be like, but I think somebody commented and it was like, it's still going to be a great season, like, seeing, like, second, who's going to come in second and how the rest of the lineup's going to line up. I feel like that's kind of what we got to do right now. Max Verstappen winning is a given, but shout out to Carlos Sainz and Ferrari. They really challenged him uh, in that last race. Although I know Max went out early, Carlos did pass Max before his car went out. I'll say, do I think Max would have won? Yes, he's Max for shot. But I will say Carlos and Ferrari, that, that speed did pass Max before Max went out of the race and retired the car. So uh, it might be more interesting, but I still got Max Verstappen, Verstappen winning as a given on every race. So. It's going to be, it, you just got to pay attention to who comes after Max Verstappen. That's the interesting part. Be honest. Constantly watching Formula One week in and week out, expecting someone else to actually win? Wasn't it Albert mm. Einstein who said insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know how I managed to rope an Einstein into a Formula One video, but... I mean, that's what you get on this channel. Dominant streaks in Formula 1 are not a new thing. Matter of fact, since the turn of the new millennium, it was an oddity if a single team or driver did not dominate a season. It wasn't something we really accepted, and we certainly didn't like it, but rather agreed to cope with, at least for a little while. But with Max Verstappen, it's just not quite the same for a few reasons. So why is it such a bone of contention? And is it really that bad? What makes this different from days gone by? Well, let's have Good a look question. see. Good question. In 2015, when Max Verstappen debuted in Formula 1, it was clear right away the potential of the 17-year-old kid. There were teething troubles with some problematic driving, some defensive maneuvers performed with the grace of a baboon on itching powder, but having said that, his speed and ability were undeniable. Even in a Toro Rosso, everyone excited for what he could potentially do in a Red Bull, and that wish would be granted sooner than we imagined. When Daniel Kvyat yeeted Sebastian Vettel into oblivion, that gave Helmut Marko enough of an excuse to perform the switcheroo and bring Verstappen up to the Red Bull seat for the 2016 Aye. Spanish Grand Prix. And with a little bit of thanks to the ever-festering silver <laughs> war that was consuming Merck at the time, Verstappen would take his maiden Grand Prix win that weekend, yeah. any and all records when it came to age-related winning of things. Now, for the next few years, Red Bull were never in a position to be able to challenge Mercedes on a consistent basis, but display after display from Max, at least after he cleaned up his act from 2018 onwards, was always exciting to watch for those bored of watching the Mercedes run away from the pack over and over again. Some even daring to say, thank God for Max Verstappen. He might not be <laughs> everyone's cup of tea, but it was always exciting to watch Max race. But why did it need to be exciting? Why, if Red Bull wasn't quite on Merck's level and Max was such a commodity, didn't he just up and join either them or ugh, Ferrari when it was led by the Italians? Well, <laughs> some rumored behind the scenes innuendos that may or may not invoke some scary libel lawsuits. Loyalty has always been a big thing for Max. Dr. Helmut Marko and the Red Bull program had been the ones who believed in him from the very start and got him that berth on the Formula One grid after only one year of racing cars. And I get Bye. that. And I think we all would. We naturally gravitate to those who extend us a helping hand. Like longtime viewers on this channel know my connections with Surfshark and their continued support. We all skip the sponsors. And how I wax lyrical about their amazing products. Okay, yeah. Now it's when I'm gonna start talking about them. So as I think pretty much all of you are watching are aware, our 
couple of bucks a month, you've got the protection of the upper 30 day money back guarantee. 2010s, a strong car that he could use to compete for a world championship in. For a while, he never got it. Sure, the occasional win, but nothing concrete that can make him a pest to the Mercedes outfit and the sheer brilliance of Sir Lewis Hamilton. And then we started to get stuck into the 2020s. They got real. 2021 was one of the greatest seasons in Formula One history. That season, uh... I reminisce about that season. What I would do to see a season like that, because I started watching in 2022, was when I started watching some highlights of some races. Uh, but then I saw a 2021 season on Drive to Survive, and oh my God, that season, dog. That season have F1 fans on the edge of your seats because it's like, who's going to win it? Like, when it comes down to the very last race, winner takes all. That's what the people want to see. That's what the people want to buy tickets for. That I'm sure the the ratings for that race had to be through the roof, dog. Like legit through the roof for that race because my God, was that was that a season uh, to remember? And I just wish I had was like watching it race by race that season like I do now, but. Uh, since I started watching, it's basically been Max Verstappen's world. And I know before then it was Lewis Hamilton's world, but I didn't get to watch that. But so I, I started in the Max Verstappen era. Ruined. Unfortunately, for a lot of people, it will be remembered for that one night in Abu Dhabi. And I'll cover that eventually in another video. So yeah. save your pitchforks and torches for that time. You could slander me then. Irrespective of what happened that night, however, and his somewhat liberal attitude toward the brake pedal in the last few races, his insanely incredible driving throughout the season was ultimately what led him to become the champion. In a season where the pendulum swung from team to team, he was a worthy champion, make no mistake, but the nature of which those dying laps happened drew great ire throughout the motor racing world. And oh. now there were people hoping that Mercedes would set out on a revenge mission for 2022, kick the snot mm -hmm. out of Red Bull, and bestow uh -huh. Sir Lewis Hamilton with his eighth world title. Couldn't do it. But this Couldn't didn't do happen. it. Nope. Despite some decent resistance put up by Charles Leclerc in the opening portion of the year, Ferrari fell victim to their frizzy hair train wreck of a team principal, and Red Bull's new car, the RB18, was becoming faster and faster. And very quickly, it became apparent that Red Bull was going to win the championship. And when Max took 15 wins yes. out of 22 races that year, he became a two-time <laughs> world champion. It was an almighty season, the most wins ever achieved by a driver in a calendar year. But the combined brain power of Max and Adrian Newey's pencil saw these stats and thought, nah, not good enough. Thus, <laughs> 2023, the RB19 was born, and holy <laughs> crap holy, that was something. Max won 19 out of 22 races, only finishing off the podium once. And when he did finish on the podium, it was never on the bottom step. This was the most dominant season from a car and from a driver. No other driver in Formula 1 history it has ever obliterated crazy. a field like this. With the exception, maybe, of Alberto Ascari, who, back in the 1950s, was quite good at driving kerosene prams through a cacophony of hay bales. Max Verstappen became a three-time world champion, and now, as of the recording of this video, two rounds in to the 2024 season. It looks like he's set to right the wrongs of 2023 and win every goddamn thing. Dang. Can, you would have thought. You would have thought, man. But car didn't hold up this time. Could win, could win 21 races. 21 out of 22 ain't too bad. But can't get to 20. Can't get a perfect season. Ah, oh, he, he has it in here. Literally the next round. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. We are living in an age of extraordinary domination in Formula One, and not a lot of people like it. It seems that every journalist, every pundit, every former driver, every fan enters a new weekend with the same attitude. Who could possibly stop Max Verstappen? It's a foregone conclusion, and it must be said, it's not far from the truth. Because from 2022 to 2023, there were 44 races held. 34 of those races were won by Verstappen. His teammate, Sergio Perez, had only won four. Now, my maths isn't the goodest, but there does seem to be some disparity in them stats. And that's been the same story with yeah. his last few 
few teammates. Alex yeah. Albon, Pierre Gasly, even Daniel Ricciardo, once Max started to iron out his race craft in 2018. Why is there such a gulf in performance between him and his He's teammates? Monster, After dog. all, Gasly, Albon, and Checo, whether before or after, were all highly respected drivers who were all set to deserve a top tier seat. Then they got it, only to look at the teammate battle between themselves and Max, to then say, nah, they don't deserve it. They've never. <laughs> He's a legit monster, dog. I think uh, the way Carlos racing this season, he getting that Red Bull seat, dog. The way Carlos, but Checo's finished second in two of the races. But uh, Carlos going to get that Red Bull seat. If Checo doesn't get second in the driver championship, 100% sure he's giving that seat up. Uh, but even if he gets second, there's still a possibility. I like Checo, uh, but... Man, I'm really starting to like Carlos driving, dog. He's he's a monster out there. Deserved it. I I always said they didn't deserve a seat. F1 fans are so fickle. Now, the problem is, when those drivers came to Red Bull, Max was the undisputed top dog in Red Bull. The team was built around him. He knew how the team worked, and the team knew how he worked. Does this yeah. mean that Red Bull builds the car around Max? Well, according to those who have actually raced the cars, the answer is no. However, experts operating out of a couch in Stoke-on-Trent who did not drive the cars would beg to differ there. So what is actually going on here? Well, in a very basic sense, drivers tend to have their own preferences when it comes to how a car drives. Some like to have the car to be pointy. Others, meanwhile, yeah. like it to handle like a whale. There's always a fine balance between what can make the car go physically faster and what the driver would be comfortable with so that they can push as hard as they can without compromise. Now, it's been said that Max likes a car with a highly pointy front end, which, while certainly fast, can't really be coped with by a lot of other drivers on the grid. And if you have no confidence in the handling of the car, you can't push it as hard as you want. And if you try True. and you don't know how to cope, you're going to end up in the wall. True. But Max God, maintains dang. that he doesn't really care about how the car handles, but rather he has one simple request. Design me the fastest car and I'll drive around that. A simple <laughs> mandate. I don't really think. That's it. Just give me the fastest car and I'll figure everything else out. As long as it's the fastest I'll take care of the rest. He's being much out of line, and that is a car designer's wet dream. To be able to design the fastest car that you can and leave it up to the professional racing drivers to be able to cope, even if the car does behave like a rainbow trout in a car wash. So, a dude who we already know is very fast on pure pace can now effectively drive anything handed to him, all the while making everyone, especially any teammate that he gets, look like a complete fool. That's so, crazy. we should be celebrating this guy as one of the best we've ever seen, right? Well, well, instead, the resulting Should domination be. of the last couple of years hasn't sat well with a large portion of the fan base. Casual fans and even the diehards are growing wary of one car running away to victory, even though that happened a lot previously, and questions are being posed of whether this domination is good for the sport or not. Instances like Formula E chief mm. executive Jeff Dodds confidently pledging a quarter of a million bucks to charity <laughs> if the Stappen is beaten to the title is a little embarrassing, and Pat McAfee claiming that this domination is making F1 so boring to watch is a little bit damning, especially when it's been done on the same network that paid 95 million bucks for the broadcasting rights and calling one of its marquee Dang. drivers, Van der Stoppen. And when the dissing comes from a dude who probably thinks that Salbert is a brand of orange juice, that hurts. But the defeatist mindset doesn't just end there. It is prevalent all throughout the motor racing world. Sure, domination has happened before in Formula One, but not really to this extent. Not that that <laughs> makes this any better. We all want to see close competition after all, yeah. but we also want to see the best of the best in what is supposedly yes. the pinnacle of motorsport. True. And herein comes the dilemma. Formula One has always- That's why I'm like, yeah, I want it. I want there to be competition. I love 2021 when it was a fight to the finish when, you know what I'm saying? Two, two guys at the top of their game with the top two cars going at it. But I don't want Max to stop his greatness. To give us that you feel i want another team to step up and say you know what we're gonna challenge him we're gonna be we're gonna be in that conversation we're going for the constructors title we're gonna fight max for it we're gonna some i want a driver we're gonna fight max for that driver's championship uh so while the dominance may not be as fun as competition as a tight competition i i wouldn't want max to lower his greatness I need somebody else to ri to raise theirs, dog. Another team to raise their greatness. 
been about having the right combination of car and driver. And right now, the Red Bull Max Verstappen combo is so potent that it's almost impossible for them to be beaten at the best of times. After saying thank God for Max Verstappen back in 2018, 2019, in 2024, we're saying, Oh God, it's Max Verstappen. <laughs> there is a significant <laughs> irony in all of that. We should be lauding this guy, whether you like yeah. him or not, and irrespective of what we think of his pops, Max is a special, special driver. One we only yeah, ever really see once in a generation. But for better or worse, in a time where the sport is more popular than it's ever been, we can't afford to have the casual fans zoning out if it becomes clear that no one could possibly challenge him for the win. It is not good for people to say that the championship is over on the first day of testing. I mean, come on. <laughs> At least have the common courtesy to wait until Spa or, or, or Mexico, you know, by which time it's almost already over anyway. And sure, we can have regulation changes put in place to bring the field closer together, but would that not go against the DNA of the sport? And there's no guarantee either yes. that the winning would stop. Then again, Rule changes put in place to curb domination is about as old as dominating itself. There is also That's the old chestnut bad. of were you saying this when Lewis and Merck were dominating? Which exactly. I'm sure is going to pop up in the comments and that this video is somehow anti-Max or anti-Lewis or... Uh -huh. To those people, I say you can appreciate talent whilst also wanting close racing at the same time. Revolutionary thinking. I completely agree with this. what this man say. I completely 100% agree. I know. And look, when it comes to Max, anybody with a brain knows just how good he is. Irrespective of the car, but running around for 60 odd laps unopposed is gonna have TV viewers reaching for the nearest glue stick around them. And that ain't really a good thing. But like with Lewis and Merck, Seb and Red Bull, and and Shimi and Ferrari before them, dominant streaks will always meet their end. This will yeah. end at some point too. For now, however, we're all just along for the ride, admiring the talent whenever we're not too bored to watch, tuning in week in and week out, asking ourselves the question, can anyone possibly stop Max Verstappen? No. I'll answer it for you. He's, he's unstoppable. <laughs> <laughs> he's on he's on a different level, dog. He's he's in a different atmosphere. He's Max for Stappy. That's all we got. Make sure y'all subscribe, ring notification bell, get a video a thumbs up so I get suggested. It's your boy Dina out.